So maybe instead of using that as a defense mechanism to deflect the blame, try and unlearn it. Try and unlearn it. Just saying. The answer is hell no. Hey, it's Nadia. I hope you're all well today. We are at over 1,000 subs on this channel in just a couple weeks. Thank you so much to everyone who's been watching, commenting, subbing. This is all really new to me and I'm still learning a lot. So having this amount of support so early on is really encouraging. Okay, time for the video. What's the matter? Just hay fever. What's the matter? Just hay fever. So I think that's a weird thing to complain about. Her text is basically saying, why can't I complain that a fat person I like lost weight? I like how they represented me. Apply that to someone who finally gave up smoking cigarettes. Oh, why did she stop smoking? I like how she represented smokers. You're being called out because we usually praise healthy behaviors and y'all are going out of your way to warp healthy lifestyle decisions into fat phobia. Not everyone is comfortable indulging their way through life and letting whatever happens happen. Yes, the BMI is not a perfect science. Even when we learned about the BMI in middle school, I remember being told that it wasn't a perfect science. But this community thinks that this is breaking news and that there are disproving years of body science with this statement. Per the BMI, the rock is actually classified as obese. That fact has dropped a lot here, and it's valid. And it leads me to my main point. While the BMI is not perfect, when we utilize it along with other factors like body composition, it does serve a function. I'm not a doctor. I don't know her BMI. And I don't need to know her BMI to know that she's working with too much weight on her body. We could eliminate the BMI altogether and that fact wouldn't change. I love that her whole page is dedicated to scaring people away from making healthy decisions and instead steering them into overindulgent lifestyles. You've got the key. Quick question. What is the water thing that you have done for love? Hey, I'm Z. And welcome to Life with Zealita. The craziest thing I've done for love is lose myself in a relationship and get up to 700 pounds. That's the worst thing that you can do. And I know this is a, supposed to be a happy thing, but um, a lot of people don't talk about that. How you can deeply really lose yourself in a relationship and it makes you really lose yourself so this is the second time we're watching a clip from her together i believe her channel is called life with zialita i'm not exactly sure about that the last clip we saw from her was her showing us that she went from 260 pounds to right at 600 pounds I like the clip here because she's explaining that she lost herself in a bad relationship and that's how her weight got out of control. And I respect what she's saying because she's not making some wild assertion that food wasn't a part of this. She's just also acknowledging the emotional aspect, which is actually something that this community wants normalized. We'll talk about it more on this channel, but there's a campaign for normalizing emotional eating. We all have to cope from time to time. One of my favorite quotes is, life is a hell of a thing to happen to a person. It's true, but coping does become detrimental at a certain point. When are we gonna stop allowing skinny people to claim they have body dysmorphia so they can be aggressively fat phobic as f We're not on the same 
Diet? Paige. Oh, I thought you were going to say diet, Ben. Because I'm so tired. The argument's worn out. People are allowed to be insecure. She's not fat phobic. She has body dysmorphia. The body positivity movement was made for all bodies. First of all, let's shift the conversation to body neutrality. Second of all, pretty sure movements are created for oppressed and marginalized people. You know, fat bodies, disabled bodies, trans bodies, people of color bodies, those bodies. And uh, I highly doubt every fat phobic piece of shit has a disorder. Also, no one said disorders can't be problematic. Matter of fact, a lot are. So maybe, instead of using that as a defense mechanism to deflect the blame, try and unlearn it. Try and unlearn it. Just saying. The answer is hell no. It is really hard for me to describe how much I hate these TikToks. They are so rude, condescending, and disrespectful yet the entire purpose is supposed to be to change hearts and minds. I've done activism in person for a few years of my life, and I can tell you this is not how you change people's minds. And if you actually care about the cause you're advocating for, the first thing you should do is learn how to effectively communicate with people. Otherwise, you could actually be doing more harm for your cause than good. Okay, friends, so let's just, you know, clarify this um, with an educational video because this is not bullying TikTok, okay? I get this comment a lot and like I get it and I don't get it at the same time. I'm white. No shit. I hold a lot of privilege. No shit. But nowhere have I ever said that I am oppressed because I am white. So why? 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 I'm not oppressed because I'm white. It's called intersectionality, my friend. It's called having different intersections and then being oppressed because of one of those other intersections, not because I'm white. Literally the reason I talk about the shit that I do is because I am white, because I hold a level of privilege where some people will listen to me over others because I'm white and I'm aware of that and I've talked about that. So just for the millionth time, I've never said that I'm oppressed because I'm white. I have other identities that are oppressed. So everybody can stop making these types of comments. Thanks. So I'm not exactly sure how often Marissa gets called out like this, but this is my first time seeing it and it made me happy. The use of the word oppression in this community is out of control. And Marissa is definitely one of the people who uses it the most. So personally, I think it's about time that people are challenging her on her ideas of being oppressed about things that she actually does have more control over than she thinks she does. So it's 2022 and we're still hiring skinny people and putting them in fat suits. Um, I am confusion. A lot of folks on TikTok talk about fat phobia, their relationship to fat phobia in our everyday lives. And one of the areas that we sometimes forget is just how amplified that is in Hollywood. There is not a place that is more fat phobic than Hollywood. We make actors gain a little bit of weight and then put pounds of padding around their bodies because directors and casting directors and producers would do absolutely anything to avoid ever actually giving a fat person an opportunity for a role. So unfortunately, it's not just an actor transforming themselves in countless ways. And of course, the actors are not solely responsible for this. But every time a famous and established actor or actress takes a role away from a fat person, you know, someone like Renee Zellweger or Sarah Paulson, who's pretty established and pretty comfortable about not losing roles, you're just perpetuating this false belief and stereotype that there are no good fat actresses. So until fat people are taken seriously for these roles, no, it's not just transforming yourself for a role. It's not, it's not that simple. How weird is it that in 2022, acting is still a skill set that you have to develop? That in 2022, if you want acting jobs, you have to be a good actor. Will this fat phobic society ever progress? All the leaves are brown, All the leaves are brown, and the sky is gray. All the leaves are brown, I think for a wall, the leaves are brown. Oh, no I actually cracked up when I watched that TikTok. I like the humor she used there. However, where we disagree is I don't think it's wrong to be against bullying people for any size. 
but that's just not good enough here. You have to admit that the world is fat phobic and that you have thin privilege or you're part of the problem. This is not an effective way to inspire allies. Thanks for making it to the end with me. Let me know what you thought about what we watched today. I had an opinion question for you all. I like hearing what you think, even if it's different from me. So I'm wondering if fat phobia exists, do you think thin phobia exists or do neither exist? Curious to hear your thoughts on this. I'll see you all in the next video. Take care until then.